remind you, we have an appointment this morning, and I would like you to bring with you... Hang on, it's my other phone. Hello? Fiona? Oh, when did you get back into town? Hmm? <laughs> well, bring it... what? Mallard, what do you want me to bring? Hold on, my dear. I'll just deal with this other call. <laughs> Mallard, for God's sakes! Kelly Monteith? Yes? This is God. <laughs> God, he doesn't have my number. <laughs> Kelly, Alex, I got your message on my machine, so here I am calling back and leaving a message on your machine. Your turn to call me, I think. Bye. Oh, no. This has been going on for days. I call her, get her machine. She calls me, gets my machine. Hello. I'm not at home at the moment. Just leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please speak after the tone. Now, if this was a person on the other end, I could be charming and witty and lucid, but as soon as I know it's a machine, I become a blithering, uh... Of... Uh, hello, Kelly? It's Alex. Or no, I'm sorry. No, you're Alex, but you probably already know that. <laughs> uh, just a little joke. Um, uh, I'm, I'm returning your call that was on my machine, which you called because my message was on your machine, and, uh, well, you know, and, um, you have my thing. My number. <laughs> so, um... Uh, uh, call me, okay? Bye. Oh. Never fails, you know? I'm here ten hours, nothing. I go out for five minutes to get a newspaper, I get three calls. I don't know, just what I need, more news. God knows we're bombarded with news as it is. Get up in the morning, you turn on the TV, there's news. Then there's a break, then there's more news. Then there's a break, then there's some more news. Another break and more news. Then you read the newspaper. Then there's news at noon. Then you turn on the radio, you get news every hour. Then the evening papers come out with more news. Then you come home, turn on the six o'clock news. Then there's news at nine. Then there's late breaking headlines. And there's news. Then there's a close down. By that time, I'm afraid to go to bed. <laughs> My phone's gonna ring in the middle of the night. Mr. Monty? Yeah? Got some news here for you. <laughs> Wait, it's four in the morning. That's right. It's been about three hours since you've heard any news. <laughs> Why any more news? It's all the same anyway. Same phrases. You know, the newspapers are the one reason I hate to tell people to live alone, see? Because when you live alone, you're sort of classified as a loner. And that's not a word I like people to use to describe me, see? Because I always seem to fit the description of those killers and rapists that are always on the loose. <laughs> Every time I read about them, it's always white, 35 to 40, light brown hair, and a loner. <laughs> and then I always look just like those identity kits that they have there. I go, my God, that's me! <laughs> Some crazy vigilante will be out on the street. There he is. <laughs> what are you shooting for? He was alone. <laughs> and they print my middle name, see? They always do that with criminals, you know? Seems like the more trouble you're in, the more names they use to describe you. It's funny, I remember when I was a kid, I could gauge how much trouble I was in by how many names my mom used to call me. I mean, if I heard, Kelly, get in here. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. No dessert, probably. Kelly Monteith, get in here. A little heavier. Probably grounded for the weekend. <laughs> Boy, if I heard, Kelly Norton Monteith, get in here. Get the hell out. <laughs> the electric chair. Woo! <laughs> Same with criminals. Look at all those famous assassins and killers we know by three names. Guys like Lee Harvey Oswald, James Earl Ray, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> It's always three names. But on the other hand, it seems like the more contribution to society you make, the less names you need to be known by. Because I look at all those heavyweight people we know by one name. Guys like Churchill and Einstein, Edison, Shakespeare. One name. Hey, who shot Lincoln? John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> what do he look like? White, 35 to 40, light brown hair. <laughs> and a loner. <laughs> but I still read newspapers. Yeah, because the power of the printed word, I mean, they are so powerful, newspapers. I mean, I've ever heard people say that. Is that the truth? That's what the paper said. They believe it because it's in the paper. I heard one guy say, Well, I know for a fact, according to the sun, that... <laughs> you know for a fact, according to the sun? <laughs> Contradiction in terms. <laughs> but I still read them because I'm just curious about who's fighting who and who's sleeping with who and who's selling what and who got born, who died... Who got divorced? Who got married? Who's who? Where? When? What? Why? See, to me, there's nothing more 
more relaxing than sitting on a park bench on a sunny day and reading something interesting and gripping and funny in the newspapers. Like a friend's bad review. <laughs> the trouble with newspapers is they can never get the whole story on just one page. Just when you get interested, it says, continued on page 14. Now, this necessitates searching for page 14, which is okay if you're reading in a vacuum. But if there's just a breath of wind... <laughs> Then you find out that, indeed, news travels fast. And in a desperate attempt to keep informed, I become literally a man trying to keep up with the time. <laughs> there's another thing I've never been able to figure out about newspapers. I mean, there's tons of them around, right? There's a new one every day, and they're cheap. So why do I feel so possessive about this one silly item? my paper. Do you mind? Well, I'm still reading it. Well, but you're not reading this part. No, but but I will be. Uh, well, until then, is it okay if I look at it? I, I promise not to change the words around. really burns me up is that I know this cheap jerk is never going to put that paper back together in its proper order. Now, it may be silly and it may be immature, but I just can't stand papers that are messed up. So I always feel that I should straighten them up. right before I throw them away. <laughs> hmm. All right, four down. Steam engine's inventor caught on a thorn. Three words of four, one, and five letters. Oh, yeah. What a prick. <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, <clears throat> bother you while you're being so creative, Elliot, but uh, do you mind talking about the show for a minute? Mm -hmm. I think I can spare you a minute. Oh, good. I've just been watching that last scene between C. Mallard Nile, his business advisor, and Kelly. Is there nothing we can do about that name? What, Kelly? No, <laughs> Mallard. Oh, Mallard. No, no chance. I've already asked Kelly if we can use the name of another bird, and he said, nope, a duck's out of the question. <laughs> OK, OK, but... It's all this insecurity stuff I can't bear. I mean, look. Look at this. That's all very well, but what if I don't have a television show? What if they decide to give me a rest? They wouldn't do that. Besides, where else would they find somebody to work that cheaply? That's just an angry <laughs> feeling I have, you know? Figures. Just when I've gotten to the point where every penny I earn doesn't go to some lawyer and pff, they'll probably take it all away from me. You are amazing. You can raise insecurity to an art form. Well, you know, I think the ancient Greeks were right. You know, they believed their destinies were controlled by gods who sat up on Mount Olympus and just changed people's lives for their own amusement. If things were going real good for somebody, they'd screw them up. Just for laughs. Hey, Zeus, look at this. What is it? You remember Kelly Monteith? <laughs> Isn't he the one who always had to hold up lavatory seats with his knee? Thank you. <laughs> says, thank you. Don't thank me, thank you. <laughs> Oh, yes, he was always worried about losing everything in his divorce. That's the one. He's not worried anymore. He did lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> well, he's getting cocky again. Starting to say life's going great for him. Oh, we should put a stop to that. Let's have some fun. <laughs> what shall we do? Let's change his sex. No. <laughs> no, we're doing that to everybody. Let's really ruin him. Let's give him a game show. <laughs> Let's finish his career. That's what I said. Give him a game show. No, no, no. 
Really put him out of work. Put him on the dole. <laughs> What's so funny? You know that Kelly Bong Teeth fella? Oh, yes. We're going to put him out of work. <laughs> Don't do that. I don't think he's going to be out of work. It's more fun watching him agonise. Oh, pile on the agony. I love to see them sweat. <laughs> but I want to give him something now. How about herpes? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Aphrodite. Just talking about you. <laughs> and that's about all you can do, Apollo. Talk. Mm. Who are we watching? Hey, isn't that the guy whose romance I cocked up last year? Yeah. God, that was fun. <laughs> well, we thought we'd give him another bash. Really drive him crazy. Let's give him a rail strike, then, if he's stuck in a London traffic jam for days. Nothing new about that. That's it. His car. He loves that stupid little car. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I don't believe it. What? I don't believe it. A brand new car. Beautiful day out. First time I've had the top down, I'm overtaking this lorry, and the whole lot falls in my back seat. Bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> a ton and a half of it all in my back seat. That's what the smell is. I thought it was your aftershave. I'm serious. No, I wish a sense of humor. <laughs> is on my back seat under a huge pile of manure. Well, don't worry. We'll get props to take it off your hands. It's not on my hands. It's in the back seat of my brand new car. What did I do to deserve this? Well, you tell jokes. Oh, come on. They're not that bad. The gods have decreed that to have humor, you must have aggravation. And you have been chosen to be aggravated beyond human endurance. <laughs> Why would anybody be driving a lorry full of bullshit through London? Probably just come back from the House of Commons. <laughs> Anyway, what did I miss? Well, you missed the scene with the gods. And I don't like all this stuff about being out of work. I mean, I don't like tempting fate. Do you, Elliot? I don't like tempting anything. Unless she's blonde, five foot eight, and does amazing things with a black and decker. No. <laughs> okay, chaps. Before we have a cup of tea, let's have a look at that scene with the Walkman. hits from the 60s. Hmm. I think he's better off with loud hits from the 80s. Kelly, that's the second time this week you've conveniently forgotten your money. You I know? didn't conveniently forget it. I actually forgot it. I'm forgetting everything these days. Kelly, old son, how are you? Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> forgetting I'm holding on to a tray. <laughs> really? I don't think loss of memory is a sign I'm getting older. No. Loss of performance is a sign you're getting older. <laughs> Any trouble there? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Uh, Hi. Cassie, remember? Uh, how could I forget? Come on. Cassie, is it my imagination or are you dressed, dressed like, like a, a pig? Dressed like a pig, yeah. I'm in the studio next door. We're doing Animal Farm. I play a feminist pig. Mm. Oh. I wouldn't touch that line with a ten-foot pole. No way. <laughs> Cassie, you're ready for your castration number. Got your bricks? <laughs> oh. I love this scene. See you later. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Felix, how's the film look? You look just fine. Oh, good. Good luck. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Nice girl. Yeah. Claps a mean brick. <laughs> yeah. Bit young for you, I would have thought. What are you talking about? You know I never fool around with girls on the show. Oh, sure, yeah. And the world is flat, and there's meat in a hamburger. <laughs> Hitler was a nice guy. What? Come on. Rehearsals await. We'll start with the scene in the sauna first. Wait a minute, what do you mean, too young for me? Well, it's just a casual observation, you know. Comes from seeing a lined face next to a smooth one. I didn't see any lines on Cassie's face. <laughs> a shame, lines at her age. Hello, 
Kelly. Oh, hi. Hi. Good workout. Yeah. Oh. Great these saunas. Yeah. Best thing to come out of Sweden since free sex. <laughs> <laughs> well. Great for the body. I don't know. I seem to sweat more during free sex. <laughs> oh, it gets all the poisons out of your system. It takes a few moments for the uh, for the pores to open up. They're probably all clogged up with gook. <laughs> gook? Hmm. That's what saunas are for. They're there to get all the gook and the Glob and the crud out of the system. I always thought my body was a temple, not a sewage farm. <laughs> yeah. My wife couldn't believe it when I told her you belong to this health club, you know. Really? Couldn't believe it. Asked me all sorts of questions. What kind of questions? Oh, you know, were you as big in real life as you are on the telly? Well, uh, what did you tell her? I told her you might be a big star on the telly, but you're not that big a star in it. <laughs> oh, nothing like a sauna for sorting the men out from the boys. Thanks a lot. Oh, don't take offence. She found it very funny. Mind you, it doesn't take much to amuse her. <laughs> Well, I suppose my manhood's now the talk of the Tupperware circuit, huh? Uh-huh. The small talk of the Tupperware circuit. <laughs> all right, all right. You should talk. Oh, don't worry about it. You won't be on much longer anyway. What? Uh, your television show. I read something about it in some gossip. Where? Um, Let me uh, see that. Where? There. What the hell? This isn't even true. Now, uh, change is one of the constants in life. Without it, we'd stagnate like a pond that wasn't moving, all slimy and putrid and <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> oh. Look at this sweat! Oh, there's nothing like naked fear to open up the pores. But why are these poor mortal slobs so funny? Because <laughs> they're all so scared all the time. It's like a threat, they just fall to pieces. <laughs> what a terrible way to live. But a lot of fun for us. <laughs> He's useless. Let's give him an ulcer. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. He's had enough for one day. Are you kidding? We're just getting started. I know. How about hemorrhoids? Oh. <laughs> the tonic one. Yeah. Nuclear pile. <laughs> no, no. We'll give him those when he's out of work. Can't afford private medicine and has to have him done on the National Health. And he'll really suffer. <laughs> but I want him to suffer now. Now, let's see. He's been working out in the gym. What about the old back trick? Perfect. No real damage, just a lot of pain. <laughs> can't believe it. I do every exercise in the gym, nothing. I bend over to pick up a newspaper, wham, my back goes out. It feels like a giant hand just reached down and went... And then when I do pick it up, what do I read but this, this rubbish? It's only a rumor, nothing to it. Stop worrying. I'm not worrying. I'm panicking. What if they're right? What if they are? Everything has to come to an end sooner or later. Oh, but not now. Not when, you know, not when... Oh, dear, we are in bad shape, aren't we? I'm sorry, I can't straighten up. I'm not talking about your back. I'm talking about your addiction. You know I don't do drugs. Your addiction to being a television star. What do you mean, addiction? I'm just an ordinary guy doing an ordinary job. Oh, yes, of course you are. An ordinary job that just happens to get you invited to ordinary parties, ordinary first nights, and ordinary beautiful women's bedrooms. I don't remember any beautiful women's bedrooms. You were probably too drunk. Oh, that's all superficial nonsense anyway. There'll be no more preferential treatment. Oh, it has nothing to do with creativity. It has nothing to do with substance. No more good tables in restaurants. It has nothing to do with... What? <laughs> what did you say? No more good tables in restaurants. Wait a minute. This is serious. I spend half my life in restaurants. 
That's my hobby. You know, I mean, some men, they like to go down to the garden shed and fiddle with a little model. Me? I like to take them out to dinner. <laughs> and then fiddle with them later. Oh! Oh, it's one of the joys of my life, to take a beautiful woman out to dinner. Although that's not without its hazards. And then the ambassador pinched me. Where? In the ante room. He pinched my cheek. What cheek? This cheek. No, I know, but I meant what cheek. Here we are, Signor Monti. Oh. Uh, via Picata. Yes, for the lady, oh, please. Thank you. Il limone. Ah, oh, that's for me. Please. Ah. Very, very <laughs> anyway, you were saying? Linguini. Oh. Hot plates. Could we have some more butter, please? Yes, excuse me. Could we have some more butter, please? That's it. Thank you. So Here what... Uh, ah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> what does your wife say? She said... That will keep your meatballs warm. <laughs> well, uh, what did he say? He said, show us your... Sprouts. <laughs> oh, oh, plates are hot. Oh. Yeah, water, mm. your water, senor. <laughs> 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 What with the relentless service and the procession of hot plates, well, only an expert juggler with asbestos hands could have enjoyed that. <laughs> well, see if anybody loves me here. Oh, yes, Mr. Monteith. Watkins here from the bank. I think you know what I want. Sure. Right. <laughs> Kelly Monteith, this is God again. I was wondering who cuts your hair. <laughs> if I ever find out who that is. Kelly, it's Alex. Oh. You left a message on my machine, and I'm leaving yet another message on yours. We can't keep not meeting like this. Oh, no. It's been going on for weeks. I wonder if we'll ever get together. Seemed to hit it off when we met. I wonder if she'd like me if I didn't have a television show. I'd be the same person. Or would I? I mean, what's the true measure of a man? What he does or what he is? So what if I'm out of work? Doesn't make me any less than what I am. I mean, I'm still the same guy. Oh, but I've been out of work before and I know how fast that erodes your confidence. I know, I mean, when you're working, you're, you, you got self-esteem and self-assurance and self-confidence. I am a television artist. <laughs> but after a few weeks of no work, all that begins to ooze away and you begin seeking it from outside sources. I am a struggling artist. Next thing you know, the outside sources become the measure of what you are. <laughs> I am a piss artist. <laughs> I hope I'm not disturbing you. It's really you. I was beginning to think you were a machine. Come in, come in, please. I'm sorry, come on in. Well, I would have called first, but every time I do, I get your machine. Really? Oh, thank you. I know, and every time I call you, I get your machine. In fact, your machine and I are going out to dinner tonight. <laughs> really, we've developed some very strong feelings for each other. No, actually, um... um hmm. She's prettier than I remembered. Hmm. He's pretty. Much the way I remembered, but shorter. <laughs> Poised. Relaxed. Ooh. Hungry. Uh, can I get you something? <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> Look at those eyes. You know, in every great novel I've ever read, the hero is always able to look in the heroine's eyes and know exactly what she's thinking. Let's see. She's thinking I have a great personality. <laughs> She's thinking I have warmth, and charm, and dynamic, vibrant sex appeal. <laughs> She's thinking... I must have a pee. <laughs> I, wonder where he's leaves. I wonder if he leaves his knickers lying around. <laughs> or if some other women have left their knickers lying around. Maybe he wears women's knickers. <laughs> Doesn't look like the kinky type. Still, you never can tell. Hmm. Hope she doesn't want to go to the loo. There's bound to be panties in there. <laughs> well, I gotta be careful here. This woman's different. She's reserved, shy. Still, you never know. 
on any given evening, under the right circumstances, press the right button. She could be a real tight. <laughs> Do that? Do what? Jerk a man out of his shoes and toss him through the bedroom door? Are you all right? Oh, uh, who's the crumpet? He's some actress he met at a charity show. Oh, he seems to be getting on top of things. Mm -hmm. I'll soon fix that. I've got plans for Mr. Monteith. <laughs> I want to do something now. Let's show the sofa across the room. Yes. Honestly, Apollo, you're so heavy-handed. Well, I like physical comedy. You certainly do. Have you seen his foreplay? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is he wearing? I think they call them warm-up suits. <laughs> and the trousers are held up with a drawstring. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Just as he stands up. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I have to be going. Oh, well, listen, I'm sure glad you dropped by because I was wondering if... Uh... <laughs> with a convent in Sussex. <laughs> you should have seen his face when he opened his bundle and found a bunch of clean habits. <laughs> I'd much rather have seen the mother superior's face when she opened up hers and found a bunch of wife. <laughs> Honest, I'm, I'm not a pervert. It's OK. I have to be going anyway. Mm. I have an interview for a rock video. Ah, hmm. all the old usual whips and chains and stuff, right? Nope. Your underpants are about as brutal as I want to get. I'm not into violence. Ah, oh, well, obviously you haven't been to a disco lately then, huh? I mean, they talk about the violence on videos. Woo! Nothing compares with the violence on a dance floor at a disco, I'm telling you. and Miss Tosh's for the punk sketch and the Karl Marx quickie. All, All right. right. Okay, babe. Sure. Remind me, what is the Karl Marx quickie? It's about Karl Marx having a quickie. <laughs> I still think it's a mistake. What? Karl Marx having a quickie? No. no. All this talk of doom and gloom and you being out of work. It frightens me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? People don't want their comedy stars to be real people. On your landing, there are no smells. Can you swear to that? I mean, until you can show me evidence that the truth about my life doesn't belong on a comedy show, then you should be taken to a place and hung by your ratings. <laughs> until they drop off. I still think you ought to reconsider. You're digging your heels in here. What are you talking about, digging well, my heels? Being stubborn. I'm not being stubborn, Felix. I mean, I, I don't have to have my way. Don't you understand that? I am not a dictator. <laughs> night, night, night. Is the Hitler diet sketch still in? No. Oh. I'll listen to... Ah! I'll listen to anybody. Oh, Kelly. Hmm? Cassie says that she's rehearsing late and she'll phone you later, OK? Oh, OK. Oh, yeah? If she wants some advice about her career. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Honest. Oh, and could you have a look around your flat to see if she left her gold bracelet there? Night. 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 Uh, night. The flat? Hmm? Uh, hmm? We were uh, rehearsing the Karl Marx quickie. Oh, yeah? Sure. Yeah. Look, I told you, I don't fool around with girls on the show. No, no. Oh, Felix, if you see Kelly, tell him I can't make that drink. Tell him, tell him I'll call him later. Night. 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 She, uh, 
want some pointers about her technique. Yeah. She asked me. Well, I'm going to the bar for a drink. I'll send the caretaker in to hose down all this crap in here, okay? What are you talking about? Felix, I told you, I don't fool around with women I work mm -hmm. with. Excuse me, I'm looking for Kelly Monteith. Oh. I'm an old friend. We were in a film together. <laughs> oh, uh, didn't you hear? 